Welcome back to another video. We're in Manchester, Johnny's with us. We thought we'd make use of the time actually being together to give you a little bit of a different type of video. I'm conscious that during this kind of off-season diaries period, we've not actually told you what's going on with new teams for next season. And lots of you have been asking where I'm gonna be playing, what's gonna be happening this coming year. So we thought we'd do a bit of a video talking about what's it like to be a free agent, what does it mean to be a free agent, and how do you turn being a free agent into signing with a club, and how does that process work? So that's the plan today. Me and Johnny are gonna talk through it and hope you get some value from it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let's jump straight in. So what is a free agent? Basically, the term free agent means, as a footballer, when you're not currently connected with a club, when you haven't signed a contract, and there isn't a team that you theoretically play for. In layman's terms, it means you don't have a job. <laughs> so, a couple of months ago, when I decided not to re-sign with PTREF, and my contract with the club finished, I became a free agent. I was unattached from any club and theoretically can sign anywhere. So then how would you go about looking for a new club? Like so there's different ways, good question Johnny, there's different ways that you can sign with a different club. The majority of people think the way that it works is you have an agent as a footballer and that agent does the work on your behalf in terms of contacting teams, developing relationships and getting you opportunities to sign with different clubs. That is true, especially at the top level. These agents make a lot of money connecting high value players with big clubs. But the level that I'm playing at and the vast majority of players in world football, you need to do different methods to try and find a team. So yeah, you do you use an agent. For example, I'm using an agent to connect myself with different teams in Sweden, in England, across different countries. But you also need to use your own networks. So old players that you've played with, old coaches that you've worked with, do you know anyone that needs a goalkeeper, in my case, and how best can you get in touch with them? You might use LinkedIn, you might use social media, you might need use emails, phone calls, but that whole process is how do you create that opportunity for yourself? So I'll tell you a little bit later on in the video what's happening with me and my situation, but I get a lot of questions from a lot of different players all different ages asking how best to find that club and that's what I reply with. You don't want to leave it all to one agent. An agent might have a lot of players that he's trying to find clubs for. Can you use your own networks, your own contacts, your own personal sphere of communication to try and sort yourself a new contract with a different team? You don't want to leave it to one person. You need to do whatever you can to try and create that opportunity. But all you need is that one opportunity, that one chance, that one person to make the right connection to find yourself a new job. Who's that, Con? We've got a date with Patrick. <laughs> so we've got the hat on now. It's getting chilly in Manchester. The reason that we're in Manchester is we just met up with Patrick, one of the Keeping Goals team. So me, Johnny and Patrick, we were just chatting about the plans for 2023 with the channel, how to get the best content to you guys. But what were we talking about before then, John? Uh, yeah, so we were talking about being a free agent. So what was it like being a free agent on you personally and everyone around you with the uncertainty of yeah. not having a team? I think that's the difficult part. There was quite a cool clip that went viral the other day actually that I saw, which was I think an assistant manager who just joined Cardiff and his kid's getting really excited that he's just joined and started a new job. And I think that's the bit of football that people don't really see. So obviously for me, you're trying to get a new job, you're trying to get a new club, you're trying to get through that process and make it all come together. But then you have a lot of people around you. So Frankie, you guys know who comes with me wherever we end up. She doesn't know where she's going to be living. She's left a lot of her friends in PTA, her life in PTA, and all that's changing. So 
it can be very frustrating. It, it can test your patience when things are dragging out and things aren't getting done. But you have to remember that it does come together in the end. You have to have a little bit of faith. But yeah, especially I think it's harder for other people around you, your loved ones. As the player, you're very involved and you know what's happening every minute of the day. But those are the guys and those are the people that probably struggle a little bit more having to wait around to see what's happening. Yeah, so on a physical side of things, you're not in a team environment at the minute. Yeah. How do you stay prepped and ready for when you do get signed physically yeah. and also mentally when you're thinking about being match ready? Yeah, so a big part of that, like you guys have seen in the off-season diaries, obviously the gym stuff that you're doing, you're making sure you're fit, you're making sure you're strong. One thing that I've been doing whilst I've been home is I've been training in with a team close to where I live, making sure that as a goalkeeper, it's quite difficult to train on your own. I've been still managing to get high level training in, still staying sharp, still working on my game and improving. Because what you want to do is when things are done, when things are set, it can change in a day. You might be in training in a new country the next day. So you want to be ready to go. So that's one thing I've been focusing on, make sure I'm super sharp. And then as soon as we're in training with the new club, you can hit the ground running and smash it from day one. We've talked about all of the things to do with being a free agent. Yeah. Tell me what's actually happening then. Yeah. What is going on? Because we've yeah. we've had lots of questions in the comments saying yeah. what's going on, where yeah. you're moving to. So at the moment, where we're up to is there are a couple of potential clubs that I've been speaking with that are based in Sweden. As you guys know, I've really enjoyed playing in Sweden. I've really enjoyed my football there. I feel like I've really developed and improved. And there's a couple of clubs that I've been speaking with, but things are kind of taking time. There's also a couple of potential opportunities here in England again, coming back here. That's another thing with being a free agent. You need to make the decision on where you want your career to head, which direction you want to take. Do I want to keep playing abroad, keep playing in Sweden, keep progressing up through the leagues? Or is it time to come back to England, maybe try a different country? So I know that's not really clear, but that's probably the stage that we're at now. There are potential opportunities. It's about assessing those opportunities, talking it through with the clubs and seeing which fits me best at this point in my career. So like we said, it can be uh, frustrating, it can be slow process, but it's also really exciting because you're in that stage of not quite knowing what's going to happen next, but ready for that next chapter and ready to take on a new challenge. So that's where we are right at this moment in time. So hopefully things are always changing. You guys will know, obviously, when something happens. But yeah, exciting, exciting times and exciting to see where Keeping Goals Series 7 is going to be. That's probably not the answer that the majority of people wanted, but no. <laughs> it's and the I, truth. <laughs> I understand and I do get a lot of, obviously we get a lot of comments from you guys, a lot of questions and you want to know and I understand. Um, but when things happen, obviously, you will know. But at the minute, that's what I can say. There's potential ones, things are moving, but it's not quite, not quite done yet. So episode done, we're back in the car. First time we've been outroing a video together for a very long time. It's probably since season two, maybe? Flashback for you keeping yeah. those OGs. But I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it answered some questions, probably um, not all of them. Yeah, I've still got questions. <laughs> but they'll be answered in good time, I'm sure. This week, back on it, hopefully making more progress on that side of things. Back to training, still training, smashing it, trying to keep sharp, ready to go whenever we're given the signal. And yeah, enjoying that side of things. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. This week's Patron of the Week is Robert Fleming. Robert, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting the channel. We wouldn't be able to do it without patrons like yourself. So a massive, massive thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it brought you guys some value. If it did, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one. Well, we might not be together. We might be. Who knows? Keep chasing improvement. Exactly. Keep chasing improvement. Have a great week. We'll see you in the next video. Look after yourselves. Take care. And we'll speak to you in a bit.